Chinese President Xi Jinping is set to arrive in Seoul, Americans on trial in North Korea, a very touching wedding, and Japan approves collective self-defense. Those are just some of the stories taking place in Asia now. Welcome to Asia Now, I'm Steve Miller. Since taking office over a year ago, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has attempted to update the nation's constitution to allow for a greater military role. It's a move that's both been heralded and reviled, even sparking one man to self-immolate over the weekend. On Tuesday, the Japanese cabinet ended the ban on limits imposed on the nation following World War II. It's been Abe's desire to once again make Japan a normal nation, and this is just one key aspect of his plan. Japan's armed forces haven't engaged in armed conflict since 1945, although previous administrations have deployed service personnel abroad in non-combat missions. Tune in to Asian News Weekly this Friday for more information on this developing story, as well as reactions across the internet. I hope you'll share your thoughts on Japan's shift in the comments on Facebook or Twitter. Chinese President Xi Jinping is visiting Seoul for a two-day state visit beginning Thursday, July 3rd. It's the first time in 20 years a sitting Chinese leader has visited South Korea before visiting the North. It's also been three years since a Chinese leader has met with any of the North Korean Kims, not to mention that young Kim Jong-un has yet to be invited for a sit-down in Beijing. China is usually looked upon as a traditional ally of North Korea, both economically and politically. However, over the past few years, a growing rift has become noticeable, especially since the younger Kim took control of the DPRK, even approving tougher sanctions against the reclusive nation. The topic of just what to do with North Korea is expected to top the agenda as she meets with Park, but talk is about all it will be. The reason North Korea continues to develop its nuclear program and fire medium and long-range missiles in the face of UN sanctions is because, in reality, there are no consequences for Kim. Despite nuclear tests and attacks on South Korea, no one in the international community has stood up to North Korea. Like a child who is always told not to do something without proper behavioral reinforcement, North Korea has learned it can do anything it wishes with only a few harsh words spoken against it. China, as much as the West, is to blame for the current state of affairs with North Korea. If she truly wishes to have peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula, China, like the West, needs to be prepared to be more forceful with Kim. The question is, are they? China is certainly willing to use force to protect their ridiculous claim in the China Sea, but why not here? Could it be like what so many analysts have stated, that China and South Korea need North Korea to exist to ensure economic growth? What do you think will be the outcome of Xi's visit to Korea? And how far is China willing to go to reel in North Korea? The official Korean Central News Agency Monday said that Jeffrey Full and Matthew Miller committed hostile acts and were going to stand trial for them. Full, 56, was arrested for acts not consistent with being a tourist, possibly for leaving a Bible in a hotel room. Miller, 24, was detained after he tore his tourist visa and demanded asylum. Quote, the relevant organ of the North is carrying on the investigation into them and making preparations for bringing them to court on the basis of the already confirmed charges. Their hostile acts were confirmed by evidence and their own testimonies, end quote. Said the North Korea's official KCNA, meaning that any chance for them to return home soon has slipped from slim to nil. The United States advises its citizens against traveling to North Korea, mentioning that being part of a tour group doesn't provide protection against arbitrary arrest. Merrill Newman, a Korean War veteran, was detained for a month while on tour last year. Most visitors North Korea detains are missionaries in some way or another, as can be seen with full. Miller, if the reports are to be believed, was just crazy. North Korea is trying to build its foreign tourism business, and it's unclear if these events will have any effect on it. Companies like North Korean Travel, who make a smartphone app, 
are banking on it. Personally, I think traveling to North Korea for pleasure is just a bad idea. You're indirectly supporting the regime and being shown a fictitious environment. True love is said to conquer all. Sometimes, as much as we'd like that to happen, it can't. Roden Ko and Lizelle May had originally planned to marry on July 8th, Roden's 30th birthday. However, Go was diagnosed with stage 4 liver cancer in May and told he might not make it that long. Go and May had a two-year-old daughter together, and it was his final request to move up the wedding date. It was an act friends, family, and the hospital moved heaven and earth to make happen. After 12 hours of preparation, the wedding took place with Roden dressed in a white tuxedo lying in his hospital bed and Lizelle wearing a matching white dress. Zakaya, their daughter, served as flower girl. Sadly, Go passed away a few hours later. Roden's brother, Hasek Go, commissioned a video of the blessed event and uploaded it to YouTube, where it's already been viewed more than 9 million times. It's a very touching display of true love. Asian News Weekly is coming your way Friday morning at 12.01 a.m., and we'll have a digest of some of the biggest stories from the Asia-Pacific region. Asia Now will return on Monday. Don't forget to share your thoughts on these stories in the comments on Facebook or Twitter. You can find us at facebook.com slash asianewsweekly or follow at asianewsweekly on Twitter. Links to the source articles will be made available at asianewsweekly.net. And if you know of someone who might enjoy this episode, please share it with them. Thanks for listening, and I hope you'll have a great rest of the week. For Asia Now, I'm Steve Miller. Asia Now is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License.